So let's begin our journey in geometry. Let me give you a complete overview of uh, all chapters in geometry in just two minutes. And you will understand how easy and interesting it can become. So you start with the point, move the point to get a line, move the line to get a plane, move the plane like this to get a solid. So that's geometry. That's one way of looking at geometry. So what we are doing is started with the point. You move the point to get a line, move the line to get a plane like this, which is two dimensional. And if I move the plane like this, I'll get solids, which are three dimensional. Now let's simplify geometry in using common language and in simple language. Let's try interpreting one to many. So if I try interpreting one to many in a diagram, I, I start with a point, lot of them together, I get a line, two lines to get an angle, three lines, I get a triangle, make this one to many. So two triangles together, I get a quadrilateral. Keep on adding triangles, uh, I'll get trapeziums and pentagons and hexagons. And if I do this uh, many more times, infinite number of triangles, I get a circle like this. So circle is nothing but uh, one to many of a triangle. Now, cut the circle, straighten this out, I get a line and that's where we started from. So line can be taken as a circle with infinite radius. Circle can be taken as a polygon with infinite lines. Line to a circle and everything in between is what we need to learn in geometry, in plain geometry. It's, it's very, so it's very simple. So we'll first start with uh, two lines together. We call them angles. Next chapter will be three lines together triangles, four of them together we learn next, we call them quadrilaterals and uh, the next chapter will be infinite number of them put together, we call them circles and it, it's, it sounds very simple, right? It's actually much easier than what you think. So geometry is going to be, it's anyway easy but it's going to get much more interesting and you're going to find it, it's going to become well below anyone's level very soon. Now. Let's understand geometry in a different way, but obviously in an easier way itself. So geometry is, or can also be taken as number patterns visualized in diagrams. So let me help you understand why geometry is number patterns visualized. So if I start with the basic number pattern, which is one, two, three, four, five, these are natural numbers. Now, if I take some of consecutive natural numbers, the numbers which I'll get is one, one plus two, if I take, I'll get three, one plus two plus three, I'll get six, one plus two plus three plus four, I'll get 10. So these numbers, one, three, six, 10, we actually call them triangular numbers. Let's understand why we call them triangular numbers. So for that, you just visualize one, three, six, 10. How do we visualize? Let me show you. One is like this one, three can be taken as one, one, two, six is one, one, two, one, two, three, like that. So it's, it's now it's very simple, right? It's obvious why we call them triangular numbers because they look like triangles. Let's see this addition of two triangular numbers. Let's visualize that. So if I take a, a triangular number six, which is one, one, two, one, two, three, and the previous number, which is one and one, two, if I just make it upside down and if I keep it over here, I'll get what I'm getting here is three, 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 which is nothing but nine. So nine is three plus six and nine is a square number. So you can easily visualize that. So now I'm very sure when I mentioned that geometry is nothing but number patterns visualized, I'm sure you got an idea now. So geometry is number patterns visualized just to add on to it. Algebra is number patterns generalized using variables and once you represent them through words and that's what we call them applications and that's what we mostly learn in science. In this section, we'll discuss lines and angles. Now, to start off with, if I take a point and if I move the point freely like this, you can see the path followed here. This is called a curved line. Now. If I take a point, when this point is moved without changing the direction like this, I got a straight line. So now for a line, 
part of a line with let's say two endpoints like this is called a line segment. Now, if I take a part of a line with one endpoint and the other one like this, so I'm marking an arrow mark over here. This is called array. So these are things which all of you know. I am just revising it. When there are uh, two endpoints, we call it a line segment. One endpoint, we call it array. So let's define. Let's look at angles next. How do we get an angle? Very simple, right? Two rays emerging from a point like this, you get an angle. One more way of looking at that is: take the first ray, rotate it like this, so I get the same angle. So angles are formed like this. Very simple, right? Two rays will be part of it. There will be a common point. Now we'll see classification of polygons. Now, based on the number of sides or number of vertices, the polygons are named like this. When there are three sides or three vertices like this, this is a triangle. When there are four sides or four vertices, it's called a quadrilateral. When there are five sides like this or five vertices, it's a pentagon. Now, if it is uh, six sides and six vertices, it's a hexagon. Seven, it will be a heptagon. Eight, it will be an octagon. Like this, uh, polygons can be named based on sides or the vertices. Now, next thing we'll understand is what are diagonals. Now, a diagonal is a line segment connecting the two non-consecutive vertices of a polygon. This is uh, easy to understand in a diagram. So, just uh, to help you understand, let's take uh, a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. In this case, A and C are two non-consecutive uh, vertices. So, A, C is a diagonal. B and D are non-consecutive. So, B, D is a diagonal. So, here A, C and B, D are diagonals. In a pentagon P, Q, R, S, T like this, if you join all the non-consecutive vertices, you will get the diagonals here. So, in this case, P, R, P, S, T, Q, T, R and Q, S. They are the diagonals. You can just take a look at it. P, R and P, S. TQ and TR and QS are the diagonals for this polygon now. PQRST. So now we'll also understand more about diagonals as part of uh, this discussion. So diagonals are nothing but line segment joining or connecting the two non-consecutive vertices of a polygon. Next we'll understand the difference between convex polygons and concave polygons. So in a diagram itself, if you if I just draw convex and concave polygons here. A convex polygon will look like this. An example can be this, this hexagon or uh, this uh, quadrilateral. These two are convex polygons. We'll understand the difference. Now, a concave polygon, I can show you. This is uh, a concave polygon or this is uh, a concave polygon. Now, in terms of diagonals, if you want me to explain what are convex and concave polygons, in a convex polygon like these two, no portions of diagonals will lie in the exterior. So here, if, if you consider the diagonals in this diagram, you can just see it here or here. So these diagonals are in, in the interior or no part of it is actually in the exterior, right? So exterior is the unshaded region here. Now in the second part of it, in concave polygons, the diagonals, part of diagonals, portion of diagonals can be outside also, as you can see in these two. So, convex polygons and concave polygons are easy to identify. As part of this chapter, this discussion, we will only deal with uh, convex polygons. Next, we will see regular polygons and irregular polygons. It's, it's very simple. Regular polygon is uh, both equiangular and equilateral. That means, uh, They'll have angles will be equal and sides will be equal. And if it's not like that, then the polygon is an irregular polygon. Just to differentiate between the two, let's look at top. Now, a square like this, where the angles are equal and sides are equal, is a regular polygon. But a rectangle like this, where even though the angles are equal, but sides are not equal, it's an irregular polygon. Now, uh, an equilateral triangle like this, where the sides are equal and angles are equal, is a regular polygon. 
and the right angle triangle like this where the sides are not equal is an irregular polygon now if you see these two diagrams this is a regular hexagon because here all the angle sides are equal all angles are equal and this is not a regular hexagon this is an irregular uh, polygon because here all the six sides are not equal all the six angles are not equal so because of th this is a regular diagram this is a regular polygon this is an irregular one so it's it's very easy to differentiate that is when the sides are equal angles are equal it's called a regular polygon next we will uh, look at quadrilaterals uh, specifically lot of properties of quadrilaterals different types of quadrilaterals 